In this lesson, we're going to take a look at some of the options that we have when it comes to working with rows and columns in a spreadsheet. And we're going to start out with this reasonably large data set. If I click somewhere in my data set and press control down arrow, it's going to jump me all the way down to the last row of data. And you can see that we have just over 51,000 rows in this data set, so a fairly sizable amount of data. Control up arrow to jump to the top. And if we press control right arrow, it's going to jump us to the last column. So we have quite a few columns of data as well. Now, the first thing that you'll notice about this data is that it's not laid out in the best format. You can see that some columns are too narrow and some are a little bit too wide. If we scroll across and take a look at the quantity column, this is taking up far too much room more than it needs to. Whereas some of these columns at the beginning of the data set are showing these hash symbols, they're not actually wide enough to display the data in the column. Now we've seen this little trick previously, and that is the auto fit columns trick. What we can do here is select all of our data. And one way that I like to do this, if I have a particularly large data set, is to click this little area in between column A and row one. If we click this, this will select not only all of the data, but all of the columns as well. And that is really important. If I was just to simply click in the data and press control A, it's not going to actually select those column headings. So I'm going to click in this square just here, and then we can double click on any of these column boundaries. You can see I'm hovering my mouse between column G and H and double click to widen out all of those columns. So effectively, what we've done here is we've auto fit the width. Now I'm going to press control Z just to undo that and put it back to how it was, because the other method we can use is to go to the home ribbon and then underneath format, we have this just here, auto fit column width. That's going to do exactly the same thing. So you have the two options just there. Now it's worth noting that this applies to rows as well. So all of my rows are fairly standard. These are the default row height. But if you have a data set where maybe you have rows which look something like this and you want to auto fit them, you could follow a similar process. So we can click in this area in the corner. You can go to the home tab, go to format, and you also have an auto fit row height in here. Click it and it's going to put those back. Let's do control Z one more time because we can also double click. So the double click trick works for rows as well. So all I would need to do is hover my mouse over any of these row boundaries, mine's in between two and three, double click, and it's going to resize or auto fit those row heights as well. So some really useful tricks there to quickly format your data set and put it into a more readable format. Now, some other things that you might want to do when you're working with columns and rows is you might want to insert additional columns or additional rows. And you might want to insert those somewhere within the current data set. So maybe I want to have a new blank column in between columns F and G. So what I can do here is select column G simply by clicking in the header area and you can press the keyboard shortcut, Control Shift Plus. Now, for some of you, that might be Control Plus on your keyboard. For me, it's Control Shift Plus. And that's going to insert a brand new blank row. And if you want to insert more, you can simply carry on pressing it. So Control Shift Plus, 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 Plus is going to insert more columns. If I want to insert, let's say, another three, I could select three blank columns, press Control Shift plus, and it's going to insert three more blank columns. Now, if you want to do the reverse of that, again, you can use a keyboard shortcut. For me, that is control minus. And you can see as I press control minus, it's deleting out those blank rows. I can also delete multiple by selecting them both control minus and they're gone. It's worth noting for all of these little tricks, you do also have a more manual way of doing this. You could select column G, right click to pull up the contextual menu, and you could choose delete from here. That is also going to delete the column. We can also delete columns by going to the home tab, going to the cells group, and under the delete drop down, we can choose to delete sheet columns. Hi from everyone at Simon Says It. We hope you're enjoying this training lesson. Please like this video to show your support for the channel. If you want to take your learning further, 
earn a certificate for this course and gain access to over 200 courses ad-free, click up there and go to simonsaysit.com. Thanks for watching and back to the course. Click this and that's also going to get rid of it. So a few different methods there for inserting and deleting columns. But what about rows? Well, happily, this works in exactly the same way. I can select a row, for example, row four, control shift plus or control plus, depending on your keyboard, and that's gonna add in more rows. Again, we can select multiple like this, control shift plus, and it's going to insert five more rows. The same thing applies, control minus is going to delete them, control minus again to get rid of them. And of course, underneath that delete menu, you have a delete sheet rows option as well. Now, what about moving and copying rows in worksheets? Well, there is a little trick to this. So once again, I'm going to select the customer ID column and you can't simply pick up this column and drag and drop it because it will try to replace the data wherever you drop it. So if you want to move this column, you need to make sure that you hover your mouse over this green border until you see that crosshair. Hold down shift and then drag it. Notice as I drag, it's showing me where it's going to get dropped by that green line. So I want to drop it just in here and that is going to move it. If I want to copy the column, so maybe I want another copy of the customer ID column, I would do exactly the same thing, but instead of holding down shift as I drag, I need to hold down control. So I'm gonna make sure that I have that crosshair, hold down control, drag, and I'm gonna drop it just here. And you can see that that has now made an exact copy of that column. Now I don't want that, so I'm gonna select this column, I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna choose delete. So very easy to move or copy columns. And the exact same process applies to moving rows of data as well. Now, sometimes, particularly when you're working with very large data sets, you can see that this data set stretches all the way across. So I have to use my horizontal scroll bar in order to see all of the data. You might decide that you want to hide some of the columns that you don't necessarily need. That's gonna allow you to see just the columns that are important to you on the same page without having to scroll. So let's say that I'm not particularly interested in any of these columns. I can select them and instead of deleting them, which will actually remove them from the data set, I can simply choose to temporarily hide them from view. So if I right click, notice I have a hide option in here. It's also worth noting that you have this same hide option on the home ribbon. In the format group, we have hide and unhide, and we can choose to hide columns. That's going to collapse those up. You, you can see we've got this green line which shows there are hidden columns. And notice that now my data set starts at column F. So that's a good indication that there are some columns that have been hidden underneath there. And I can go through and just do the same for any data that I'm not interested in. So maybe I'm not interested in any of this. I can right click and I can choose hide. So now I have only the data that is of interest to me all on the same page. And I don't have to use my horizontal scroll bar to see everything. So this can sometimes be a really useful little trick. Now, if you have hidden columns in your data set and you want to bring those back, what you have to do here is you have to make sure that you highlight the column before and after where we have the hidden columns, right click and choose unhide. And that's gonna bring those back again. And if you want to unhide all columns, you could select everything, right click and go to unhide and it's going to bring everything back again. And exactly the same works for rows. If I were to select some rows in my data set, right click and choose hide, it's going to hide them. And notice now that the row numbers are no longer consecutive. We jump from three to 11, showing that there are hidden rows in this data set. And once again, you can either select the rows either side of the hidden ones, or you can select the entire data set, right click, choose unhide, and that's gonna bring those back again. So those are some tips and tricks when it comes to working with your rows and columns in a large data set. Congratulations on reaching the end of this training video. Continue your training in Excel 365 for beginners with the next video in the series by clicking over here.
For more related training videos, click over here to watch this popular playlist of free learning resources. To see more videos like this one, click below to subscribe.